Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we are going to continue looking at geologic time. So in this video we're going to begin thinking about unconformity. So the first we need to think about is what is an unconformity? Well an unconformity represents a portion of the rock record that is missing. So if you imagine we have a sequence of rocks and uh, during some period of geologic time, part of that sequence gets eroded away. It's lost. The rocks are destroyed. They're gone forever. And then what happens is, is new sediments get deposited on top of that erosional surface. So at the contact between the two layers of rock, which represents the, the erosional surface, we obviously have lost rock. And this is going to equate to lost time. So we're missing a portion of our chronological sequence. And this in geology is referred to as an unconformity. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about how unconformities form. And we're going to think about the different types of unconformity. So in this model here, you can see we have a situation where we have some sediments which are being deposited in the ocean. And we can see in this case we have a grey limestone being deposited and it's being deposited as nice horizontal sheets, as you would expect. Now obviously because the sediments being deposited underwater, the rate of erosion is going to be extremely low. So we have a net buildup of sediment over time because we've got more sediment being deposited than is being removed and eroded away. Now, eventually what's going to happen is our limestone is going to be pushed above sea level. And of course, this can happen in one of two ways. Either global sea levels can drop, exposing the limestone, or the limestone itself can be pushed physically above sea level due to deformation. Now, if we look at the diagram here, what you can see is the limestone beds, which were once horizontal, are now quite clearly folded. And so we know that this limestone has been pushed up above sea level due to deformation. So there's been some kind of event that's led to the limestone being pushed above sea level. And of course, once it's above sea level, it is exposed to erosion due to the atmosphere or due to other processes such as rivers. And so we can see that the top of our limestone layer is being directly affected by erosion and we can see it's producing this very uneven, highly irregular surface. You compare that to the original top of our sequence here, which was well, would have been relatively smooth. So we can see that our folded limestone sequence is being eroded by a river. And so obviously this erosion is going to be destroying rock. We are losing material and therefore we are losing time because that part of the rock record is gone. And of course, if it's gone, a geologist can't see it. And so we don't know what was happening during that period of time. So then what's happening is we can see this is our limestone here and this represents the erosional surface that we can see right here. Now then what's happened is a new layer of sediment has been deposited over the top of this erosional surface. And so what we have is we have a situation where we have a sequence of limestones here. We have the unconformity, which is coming along here like so. And then we have the younger layer of sediment being deposited over the top. And so this unconformity here represents a portion of lost rock. So in this particular model, we don't know how much rock has been lost, but let's for argument's sake, say that we can date our sequence of limestones and let's say we can use a fossil in this layer of limestone here to date this particular limestone to 250 million years ago and then we can use something in this layer of sedimentary rock here to date this and we know that this layer of sediment was deposited 200 million years ago well we therefore know that this boundary here the unconformity represents 50 million years of lost time. Because remember, the upper limestone is 250 million years old. This sediment here is 200 million years old. There is therefore a 50 million year difference in age. And so the unconformity represents 50 million years of rock, which has been eroded away and lost. Now, in this particular diagram here, you can see we have a type of unconformity where we have layers of rock below the unconformity here, which have been deformed, so they're tilted, they have a dip. In contrast, the layer of rock above the unconformity is horizontal. So when we have an unconformity where the layers of rock below the unconformity have been tilted and the layers of rock above the unconformity have not been tilted, 
This is a, a specific type of unconformity which is referred to as an angular unconformity. And in angular unconformities, the layers of rock below the unconformity will always be tilted, and the layers of rock above the unconformity will always be horizontal. So let's have a look at an angular unconformity by once again going back to the Grand Canyon. So obviously, just if you're thinking about relative dating, we know already that due to the principle of superposition, the oldest rocks will be at the bottom of the sequence down here, and the youngest rocks will be at the top. Now, what you can notice is that these lower rocks here have a dip to them. They're slightly angled. You can see they're coming down like so towards the bottom right. Compare that to these layers of rock right here, which are quite clearly horizontal. Now, in terms of uh, working out our relative dating, well, this obviously means that the uh, rocks down here were deposited, then all of these rocks here were deposited until we get to this point here. Then we quite clearly had an event which caused the rocks to be tilted, and then the horizontal rocks were deposited over the top later. Now, what we have, therefore, is a situation where we have tilted layers of rock below and horizontal layers of rock above. We therefore have an angular unconformity that's running along this boundary right here. So if we just go back to our previous diagram, what we have is a situation where as our rocks are uplifted, they get tilted due to deformation. And then when the new layer of rock is deposited above them, that layer of rock is horizontal because it's not being deformed. The same thing has quite clearly happened here. This package of rocks down here were originally horizontal, but as they were uplifted, they became tilted. And of course, this uplifting resulted in this package of rocks being exposed to the atmosphere, and it was eroded and rock was lost. And then later on, these horizontal beds were deposited over the top. And so that means that this yellow line therefore represents an angular unconformity. We can see the same thing when we look at this sequence of rocks right here. So we can see that these rocks down here quite clearly have a vertical dip to them. In contrast, these rocks here are going from left to right. So we have two different dips. Now, so this obviously means that something has clearly happened. Once again, we know that the change in dip from originally being horizontal to this vertical dip that we can see here is more than likely the result of deformation. And so we can say, right, this package of rocks formed, then they were uplifted, and as part of that uplifting, they were deformed, hence the change in the dip. Obviously, because they were uplifted, they became exposed to the atmosphere, and so this meant an erosional surface formed right here. So this was once upon a time uh, a surface on which you or I could walk. And then later on, after this erosional, erosional event occurred, we then have the deposition of these horizontally bedded layers of sediment above. And so once again, this represents an unconformity. And when we're trying to classify the type of unconformity, we can see the rocks below the unconformity have been tilted and the rocks above the unconformity are horizontal. It's therefore going to be classified as an angular unconformity. And angular unconformities on the whole tend to be associated with sequences of rocks that have undergone some form of deformation. And that deformation is often the, the result, often causes the rocks to be pushed above sea level and that that obviously results in the erosion which produces the unconformity. So what about the next type of unconformity which is referred to as a non-conformity? So non-conformities occur along the boundary between igneous or metamorphic rocks and sedimentary rocks. So in this case we can see we have a situation where we have a sequence of rocks. In this case we can see it's grey and it's got these uh, little crosses on them. And this sequence of rocks which is grey are going to be either igneous or metamorphic. It could be either type. So you'll notice that these rocks have been exposed and you can see the erosional surface right here giving you this very highly irregular appearance. So once again this is a surface on which you or I could walk in theory. Now, if we look at this, we can see that our igneous or metamorphic rock is essentially non-layered, so it's often what we refer to as massive, it doesn't really have any features, and then as I said, we can see the top of it's been eroded away to give this highly irregular surface. So what happens then is eventually over time, we're going to get a layer of sediment deposited over this erosional surface, and we can see that layer of sediment right here. 
And so this contact running along here between the igneous or metamorphic rock below and the sedimentary rock above is referred to as a non-conformity. And once again, it represents a period of lost time. So let's say that this is a granite. Well, in this instance, we can imagine our magma intrudes the crust and our granite begins to solidify. And let's say that occurs 400 million years ago. So this magma becomes 100% solid to give us our granite 400 million years ago. Well, we know obviously because our granite's intruded into the crust, there therefore must have been rock above it at some point. And so we know that in order for this granite to be exposed on the surface of the earth, the rock which was above it must therefore have been eroded away. And so through the process of eroding the rock above it, the granite eventually became exposed, uh, producing this uh, erosional surface which we can see here. And then let's say 300 million years ago, this layer of sediment was then deposited over the top of this erosional surface. That therefore means that there is 100 million years of lost time essentially in the form of lost rock because the granite is 400 million years old and this layer of sediment here is 300 million years old and so we've lost 100 million years. So if we look at this diagram here, well, let's just say picture, we can see this exact uh, situation. So down here we have ourselves a granite, and this granite is Precambrian, so it's going to be older than 541 million years. And we can see this particular granite is it's quite massive in its appearance, so there's no obvious layering to it, and it has this light kind of creamy grey colour. In contrast, above it, we have a sequence of Paleozoic sandstones. So they're going to be younger than 541 million years old. And we can see that this particular sequence of sandstones quite clearly has nice horizontal bedding to it. So we have a sequence where we have an igneous rock in contact with a sedimentary rock. And so the contact between them right here is going to be our non-conformity. So the final type of unconformity we're going to think about is a type called a disconformity. So if you remember this diagram, we've already seen it. So here we have a situation where we have our sequence of limestones being deposited underwater. Once again, because it's underwater, it's protected from erosion. So no erosion is taking place. All that's happening is sediment is slowly accumulating. And so we're producing a nice sequence of horizontally bedded limestones. Now, what happens is in this case, the limestones are being moved above sea level again. Now, if you'll notice, the limestones are not being deformed. So the original bedding, which was horizontal, is not being tilted. Now, this could be for a couple of reasons. It could be because the sea level dropped, exposing the limestone, and obviously that wouldn't deform the limestone. Or it could be maybe the limestone was pushed above sea level through tectonic forces, but those tectonic forces didn't cause the limestone to be tilted. Either way, what we have is a nice horizontally bedded limestone, which is exposed on the surface of the earth. And so the top of our sequence of limestones is going to be actively eroded, producing a highly irregular undulating surface, which we can see here picked out by this kind of rusty red color. So as we've already discussed, this surface here is being eroded. We are therefore losing rock. And so we are therefore losing time from a geologic perspective. Now, then what happens in this model is we drop back below sea level and we have more layers of limestone being deposited, this time being marked out by this darker gray color right here. And so this particular type of unconformity is referred to as a disconformity. So in a disconformity, we have horizontally bedded rocks below the unconformity, and we have horizontally bedded rocks above the unconformity. But the unconformity itself undulates. It has topography. It's not a completely smooth line. The unconformity goes up and down and it wiggles around all over the place. And so this is the classic definition of a disconformity. Horizontally bedded rocks below the unconformity, horizontally bedded rocks above the unconformity, and an unconformity which undulates. It has topography. So if we look at the situa situation here, you can actually see that we have two disconformities in this particular image. So our first unconformity is coming through here. So below our unconformity, we can see we have a sequence of horizontally bedded limestones. Above our unconformity, we can see we have another sequence of horizontally bedded sedimentary rocks. So we have horizontal rocks below, 
horizontal rocks above and we have an unconformity that is quite clearly undulating it has topography to it so this yellow line is going to count as a disconformity so this is going to be disconformity number one we then have another erosional surface so if we follow this disconformity here you can see as we're coming across there's our disconformity we keep going then all of a sudden that disconformity ends right here that's because it's being cut or in geology we say truncated by a second unconformity right there picked out by this green line and this also is going to be another disconformity so in the case of the sedimentary rocks below our uh, unconformity we have horizontal here and horizontal here so we have horizontally bedded rocks below we also have horizontally bedded rocks above and although it's relatively smooth it does still have some undulations to it and so we are also going to classify that as a disconformity so we need to remember that unconformity simply represent periods of lost rock from our stratigraphic record and therefore to geologists this represents lost time. We also need to remember that unconformities come in three distinct types, angular, nonconformity and disconformity. All right, thank you for watching everybody and have a good day.